Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check, check, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, in no more there. Walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. When I mean all, I mean all. Just Google us. It will pop up in our heartbeat. But when I mean all, I mean Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it. Twitter, you name it. We're on it. But if you want to see our visuals, you got to go over to our YouTube channel. And yes, we, you're going to subscribe because we give great content every single day, three, four, five times a day. But if you want to exclusive stuff, you got to go ahead and sign up for our membership. How you get to our membership is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section. There's a link that says join our membership. Click that link and it'll, you'll get everything way before every everybody else let me tell you sometimes all of these clips be coming and you want to see the full interview that's where you're gonna find a full interview in the membership uh, you never know we might send you free merch to sign up for a membership thank you in advance and thank you for the support wow hey man listen man check it man i got a guy here today y'all i'm gonna get that young crowd nigga i'm working right now because these young niggas coming through now yeah. <laughs> check it man lewis bell is in the building what's happening p oakland stand up yes lord you stand me there you in the building p man yeah hey man listen man hey man i was excited about this man i really was man it bumped into me i was like man i'm it better go down so i got real excited after talking to you yesterday man yeah so, no, I'm excited to be here, man. I'll be watching y'all. I'll be at the house. I'll be watching too many platforms, but when I watch one, I like it. I continue to watch. So oh, I've really been watching. I love what y'all doing. What was it about us the first time you saw our show that mm -hmm. made you want to keep watching? What was it? Uh, first of all, y'all remind me of, like some kin folks I got. You know, I got I got folks in Texarkana, what? Louisiana, what all of that. Yeah, Texarkana, oh, man. man. That's hard, yeah, Woodberries, man. On that's my mama's hard. side, that's hard. Feel me? So my pop side, Louisiana. You know, Monroe. Bad rooms. So, you Free know, Money I, Moses, I Monroe, uh, my other co host right there in jail right now. Free Money Moses out of that Monroe. We got to free him. Mm, you know from Monroe? Yeah. That go crazy. So I felt <laughs> that energy. And I'm like, I just want to chop game with him. Man, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's hard. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. But you born in the Bay Area, California. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what was it like growing up in the Bay? Man, it was it was fun. It was fun because um, you know, it's a it's the faster life. You know, growing up going to hella house parties, you know, party life at an early age, 13, 14, 15. So, you know, got hip on game early, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Fucking with hella women. Mm. Yeah. But what okay, cause every time we go to <laughs> California, we always go to LA. I've mm -hmm. been to San Diego, love San Diego. Mm -hmm. But what is it about the bay that um stands out why you be like, okay, all y'all tourists need to come on over there to the Bay Area, check it out, cause this is what y'all gonna love this. What is it that I'm gonna love? The culture. What the about culture. the culture? You um, said the culture, explain it. Lingo. So uh, Bay Area, I feel like we always ahead of things early. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I'm not gonna exaggerate because mm -hmm. I'm from there. But you know, we always ahead of things. We was very early um, on the independent side of like, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur as an really? artist. Yes. Yeah, so you know, they say Atlanta ha was on top of that. That's now. No, even back then, Atlanta. No, I, shout out to the ATL, but we talking about independent artists. We talking about Too Short came out at 82. He was popping at 82. Who was the first independent artist? You Too know? Short. He was the first. Master P came to Oakland in the Bay Area, Richmond, Vallejo, all them places and learned the independence game in Richmond. Really? <laughs> From E-40 and all of them. Vallejo, all of that. And he came to the Bay Area and then he went back to Louisiana with the independence. Mm. <laughs> and then took over his whole section. Tupac came to Oakland and the Bay Area and Marin and, you know, learned a lot about the independence of uh, Digital Underground. That's who Pac started with. Right, right, right. The niggas on the East Coast wasn't, they wasn't, you know, open to embrace him. Got it. So Tupac embraced the Bay Area because mm -hmm. we embrace him. We don't, the Bay Area don't give a fuck about how famous you is, what, what clothes you wear, none of that. If you ain't gamed up, you ain't moving a certain way, we ain't gonna relate to you. So you said gamed up, but when I think about California too, mm -hmm. I think about gangs more than game. Nah, that's LA. Bay so Area, five hours, that's a five hour drive. Okay. From, from LA. So y'all don't have gangs? Nah, we got we got blocks. Really? Yeah, people don't bang crip blood. We don't do none of that. That's crazy. Yeah. I never thought that. I thought that all of California have that. That's what I'm saying. The rest of the world doing it. And that started in L.A. Mm -hmm. And the whole rest of the world picked up on blood, crips, and all but that. But not the Bay Area. We don't do that to this day. 
We don't represent that. We represent getting money with niggas. We hustlers. We not right. gang bangers. Okay. But shout out to the gang banging culture. Right. That's why I like LA because they stick to their culture. We mm -hmm. stick to ours. Mm -hmm. You know, we we come from more of a uh like like I said, a hustler independent. We always trying to sell something. We trying to get money with you. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Um it's a whole lot of uh lingo. Start a lot of words. People don't know tap in. Oh, oh, what? that started out there? Come on, man. No. Shout, shout out Sonny Bo, man. I got a character. Uh, my character Sonny Bo. Uh huh. I, uh, I heard that. I saw yeah. that. I I got a song. It came out in two thousand seventeen. I saw that too. Called Tap In with Filthy Rich. But it didn't start out there though. Pull up, pull up something. People uh got tap in on wax before two thousand seventeen. I'm gonna look it up. I got it. Didn't look that up before, but I'm gonna look that up. What other they be lingo? Swagger jacking us. <laughs> <laughs> what other lingo you you think? Allegedly started out there. That's facts. what I'm gonna say. Hella. No. That's a Bay Area word. Look it up. It's the fact. Hella. He said hella. He said tap in. All of that started out there in the Bay what? Area. You believe that, babe? No, I, I, agree, I agree. I agree with him 100. percent Some stuff we say, like T. Jones down here. That boy don't know nothing about us. We say man. That boy don't know nothing about us. Mm -hmm. It's a different world down here. Mm -hmm. So I get it. it. On the bay, they he hollering the p and all that. That caused a lot of pimps up there. Yes, I know all about it. Shout out to Bill Haney, Devin Haney, my people. Yeah, yeah, yeah stop exactly. Playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get it. Man. <laughs> this is what I do. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. he also say independence, as in like too short. He said too short. Was the first he was he was, was. He, the first? he thought it was real dope in, when it comes to the independent no, but what, were they the first independent artists yes yes okay fact. yeah yeah oh, I'm, 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 I'm the music, the music guy. guy yeah so yeah. I know Checking already yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a music connoisseur like yeah. I, I I'm a too short fan yeah you know what I'm saying you you young yeah before you was even born, mm -hmm. this nigga was getting to it. You know what I'm saying? When he was, was you born? In '82, I okay. was born in '94. There you go. So I know <laughs> when I yeah. heard him, it was it. You gotta realize I'm their age, yeah. so I'm more of the riding around in the car type nigga. And I was gonna bang that shout. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cuss words. Yep. That was the first. You know, the first, the four, the first ones coming up. That's why me and Faison rock mm -hmm. a lot of the older cats because. It's real, like me and Bill Haney. Yeah, it's a yeah, real deal. Yeah. It's Richard, real. Richard Pryor was trying to act like Bill Cosby mm -hmm. until he got to the Bay Area. That's he hard. Was, he was trying to imitate because Bill Cosby was Everywhere. the biggest. Right. And he was. He wasn't cussing. He ain't doing none of that. He he tried to emulate what Bill Cosby was doing. He got to the Bay Area, Berkeley, Berkeley, Oakland, and all that. That's during the time with Black Panthers. We we don't give a fuck. We don't bow down to no other culture. We don't give a fuck. He started feeling that on him and shit. Is up from there. Yeah, nigga, he get to talking crazy. Then after that, <laughs> that's oh, boy. I love the way how you know your history, you know your culture. That young boy yeah. been studying. I love that. Yeah, raised by OGs, not IG. Yeah, hey. I see that on the show. Not no shit. Oh, I see no no IG. Just you know something. That, you know <laughs> so, I like that. Know. So you born? Okay, so were you raised with your mom and dad in the same household? Yep. Yep. You know that's a My blessing, right? Yep. I talk about it on stage all the time. Yeah, because I'm telling you, 80% of men or people who sit in that seat is not saying the same thing that you saying. I know. I wanted to bring them to the motherfucker, uh, to the show today. I know. I sure wish you would have brought them, but yeah. we had a good time. Ooh, I'd have been messing with him because that's what oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, mama, he'd been talking shit. Too. <laughs> I love so, what's the advantage to you growing up? Because, you know, as a kid, mm -hmm. and I want you to go back to your kid mind, not mm -hmm. your mind now. Mm -hmm. What do you feel like the advantage was of having your mom and dad? What, tell me a time where you, because um, every kid venture off into some sort of trouble. Mm -hmm where your dad had to pull you back or your mama mm -hmm. had to pull you back and the advantages of having him there or her there. Mm -hmm. You know, what was that? Give me I, that scenario. That's a great question. Um, I realize it, it happens a lot, but I know it was very important. Um, my pops, my mom and pops, they, uh, they helped me with the transition because, you know, when you get 15, 16, you know, your peers, you know, people you go to school with, people around you, they get money in the streets and all that. And, um, you know, sometimes you get a little tempted to, you know, go outside the pocket. Right. And um, when I was dibbling, dabbling, going too far off, you know, moms and pops, you know, they, they got me right because, you know, uh, like when I was 16, uh, it was a thing, you know, it was popular. A lot of people was hitting licks, mm -hmm. you feel me? Meaning, you know, running in people's houses, right. stealing shit and all that. And, um, you know, I was just seeing it and... I was just having a conversation with my mom. I was frustrated, you know what I'm saying, trying to figure out how to get some money, you know, 
didn't want to really work a job. But, you know, my mom was on some like, you don't come from no thieves. You don't come from people that steal. Your granddaddy was a hustler. Your daddy a hustler. You know what I'm saying? That's not in your bloodline. So don't get caught up with all the shit that's popping right now. This shit was like that. Whatever that's popping, that this shit like the dope game. You know, <laughs> shit it be popping for a minute, but when it go left, it go left. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to take that route. You know, I see something in you that's better than that, and that really that um, that stood out to me because. Um, she didn't have to she didn't have to be that transparent with me. You know what I'm saying? Most people, you know, when you fucking around, you know, you can't communicate with your mom or your dad about, you know, what's really on your mind. I love the way how you actually went to her to even say that in from the get-go. She felt it on me. Okay. Nigga moving. Then you know when you know how you know when your baby moving different. But she got it out of you because sometimes you go to your kids and they don't open up. Yeah, but you gotta restructure it. Cause it's always in you. Mm -hmm. You know, some it's hard to. Sometimes you got to know who you are and what you raise. A lot of shit I know, um, a high move is because of my dad. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn a lot of shit just from the streets. A lot of street shit I learned from my dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not saying my dad just a street nigga and all this, but he taught me how to move. He didn't hide the game from me. He didn't hide the game from me. He gave it to me. So when I'm outside, I, I, I dodged a lot of bullshit and trouble because I was ganged up about certain things that... Uh, people in the streets to take advantage of you if you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They can misguide you, and it sounds good, but you gotta know when you can. You gotta you gotta peep gang when niggas trying to you know, you know. Yeah, because you didn't you fall the because you didn't fall for the. Because one thing I hear a lot of men say, um, man, I see them dope guys out there with them flashy cars and all that money mm -hmm. and the way how they dress. That's the materialistic stuff is usually what get them yeah. to come out and be like, man, I want to be like that. I want and see all the girls, especially after that. Yeah, I want that. Exactly. You know, and some yeah. of these people come from good households. Yep. But mm -hmm. the flashy stuff is what get them to go out there. Yeah. You Luckily, know? I just had to get the gab. I didn't need none of that to have women. Mm. That's hard. And he, you know, he taught me that. He, my dad told me, you know, nigga, you're going to be pussy rich for the rest of your life. <laughs> you know, he, nigga, if you was going to, if you homeless, nigga, you had a sign, nigga, a girl going to come in. Nigga, see something in you. You know what I'm mm -hmm. talking about? So don't, you don't got to chase that. They going to chase you. That's I like he instilled that. that in me. So, you know, once you get that out the way now, okay, shit, I ain't got to worry about looking for hoes. Hoes going to find me. Let me find something to do then. And because of that, that's were all, you able all. to pull one of your friends out too? Because the information is not always just for you. It's always for you to pass on to somebody else. Yep. Were you able to save somebody else because of that information? Um, They wouldn't listen to me. Okay. Because we all the same age. People mm -hmm. around me wouldn't listen to me. But but what happens is maybe your friends see that you have your mother and father, exactly. and they and they and they, they ain't gonna tell you, mm -hmm. but they're gonna if they you, they'll bring it up when you least expect it. I seen you know the way he was with his mom and dad, mm -hmm. and I didn't have that. And they say stuff like that either they miss their parent or something like that, or they seen a you know what I mean. They seen they was able to gravitate to you you your family just to help them to understand. Yeah, him. yeah, no, nah, I think that's that's important. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, my pops for sure was you know uh, the, the pops to everybody. That's right. Yeah, so and I understand that because like I said, a lot of times even in this game when I came into it. Um, just guys your age, uh, from Shorty Low uh, Junior to uh, Little Soldier Slim, like like I always talk about them because they they dad passed away and stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just filling those gaps, being there if they need something. Man, what you need? Call me. I'll let me. Mm -hmm. If you need to talk, if you need me to pull up, fly up, I'll do that. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. That's the way it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like that. It's really unfortunate that everybody not, um, for, not you know, had an opportunity to have that. But, you know, my dad didn't have that. So, you wow. know. He so, he wanted him. He doing everything he wished his pops did for him. Wow! And he, mm -hmm. so he so he basically he makes that he he the rub. He like I, I got to do more. He probably overcompensate because he want to make sure he's there for you. Not not necessarily because no. he, he 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 raised me. He raised me to be a man. So you know you know my dad always taught me shit like you know nigga, what the next man eat don't make you shit. You That's know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't gonna give you shit. You know, uh, anything that he taught me, he made me do it while he's teaching me. Wow. Meaning, if I got to cut the grass, take out the track, whatever, drive, change the tire, he going to tell me how to do it. He going to walk me through it, but I got to do it. No, that's hard. I like that. Yeah, so it ain't I'm, no... Are you the oldest? Youngest, but the youngest. only boy. The only boy. Yeah. So how many sisters you got? Three. Three. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Baby boy. 
Yeah, baby boy. Let me let me let's get in this comedy, man. Like, yeah. how did you end up even? Did you ask him? How, that? No, I, I was how gonna did, say, where did you did get you? it from? Where did you get that um, funny bone from, so to say? Your uh, mom, your dad, who? Both. Really? My parents funny. <laughs> yeah, I think I get the raw and the cuttingness from both of them. But my parent, my mom, uh, most serious. You know, I, I get that. You know that. You know that little mini Black Panther in me. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. That pro black the shit. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. Yeah, from my mama. You know the podcast side of me. That's my mama talking. Uh, my pops, all that. Hey, popping the collar. He you know, understand me? Yeah. Animated. <laughs> you know, charismatic. All of that. That's pops. So, what? Um, know. when did you? Who? Who did you? First, see that you was like, man, I'm gonna get into this comedy thing. Who? Who was the first person you uh, went who inspired on stage with him? and all that? Um, the first person, my 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 start of comedy is different from Let's everybody in my generation. How old were you? Yeah, I was 18. Okay, when I started, so um, nobody locally inspired me. Um, first person I seen live that made me feel like, damn, I could do this shit, is a. Uh, Marlon Wayne's really Marlon Wayne's and Sean Wayne's. You seen them? Yep. I was, um, Live. I'm a fan of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At 17, I went to go see him, and um, I was thinking about doing comedy, and my parents took me to see him. It was just so odd. I never told them about it or nothing, but I just happened to go to a comedy show with my parents, and then um, it was on my mind. I was thinking about doing comedy. Then I seen him perform live. And shout out to Marlon and Sean, but they TV shows and movies. Totally different. They out of here. They goats. You feel me? But I, I'm like, oh, shit. The stand-up, it wasn't, um, you know, it didn't look as hard as I thought. Yeah. So when I seen them perform, I'm like, shit, nigga, I can do that. You feel me? Yeah. Like, no disrespect. But I'm yeah, like, on your at mind. that time, nigga, I could do that. That shit looked at fly. Them niggas just came out, you know, talk they shit. Talk, and then, yeah. I'm like, nigga, I could do that. <laughs> so I didn't say nothing, you feel me? But I went home and I'm like, oh, I'm, I made my mind. Cause it was already on my mind. Like, I made my it. mind that day. I'm finna start doing this shit. So I started doing hella open mics. At 18, I had to wait. I had to wait for a year to perform. Cause I, you know, I want to cuss. Cause you wasn't still in school too, yeah. right? I was an independent study. So, okay. you know, I had, that's why I had the time to think. Right. Cause I knew I wasn't going to college and none of that shit. And you had to, you had to support of your parents or did your parents like, nah, you got to go get a, a real job. I didn't so tell them. Say. I didn't tell no, them. No, but eventually you told them before you went and did the open mics, didn't you? Nah. Oh, they didn't know at all that you was doing all My that. My mama found out when I, perform that was like Lewis Bell is performing tonight <laughs> and she like you got a show you gonna perform tonight I'm like yeah yeah I was nervous I told them I didn't want them to come oh they didn't come I, they wanted to come I'm like don't pull up on me <laughs> I'm gonna tell y'all when I'm ready for y'all to see me <laughs> I, I, okay so you so you went through all those times of just going up on stage trying to get yourself there yeah and how important is that because a lot of the youngsters they they get this immediate fame, a lot of them, whether it be by via Instagram or whether it be on Facebook or something, just, you know, quickly people know them. How important was those times when you went to those places and got on that open mic? It's very important. I feel like humble beginners is a lost thing right now. Mm -hmm. I feel like humble a lot of comedians right now don't even want humble beginners and don't even know what it feel like. It, it molded me to the comedian I am today. You know, uh, going to open mics, signing the sheet, waiting, only doing three minutes, five, five minutes, performing in front of only comedians for a year and two straight. Just straight open mics. So it builds up your confidence. It builds up your stage presence. It builds up the understanding and respect of the art of comedy. You know what I'm saying? It's hella different type of comedians that people don't even know. I didn't know about no white comedians, no nothing. And there I, is an art to it's it. It's an art to it. I was just <laughs> talking to Faison on the phone, right? Mm -hmm. And when you came in, you seen me talking to Faison. Yep. And Faison immediately, when I told him, introduce you and you know, just hear me hearing him hearing you talk in the background, he was like, he seemed like he understand. He know he really came up the right way. Yeah. I don't know what he heard, but he felt that. Some yeah, you feel it. You can, he see can it. feel it. Yeah. So he already knew because he uh, he has an issue with 
being able to see those guys come up the trenches. And a lot of times I be on him because it ain't going to happen that way a lot of times because of the way the world is now and the way the Mm -hmm. digital world is. These people is blowing up off a nigga might have a fork, nigga. Just boom, he go. Yeah, (laughs) no, for real. And it's not, it's not, it's not cool. It's just like the old rappers, like Too Short and them coming out the trunk. You you seen a time when they start giving massive deals? Yeah. Even though Too Short was able to adapt, him him and E Forty did a great yeah. job understanding yeah. that whole algorithm of deals coming and all that. I could see them transitioning <laughs> because they know the business side they of it. Hustlers. Because they was doing it before Boy, they was coming. Do, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I know how door deal work. I know yeah. how all this shit work because I was in it before I was selling tickets. There you go. But a lot of <laughs> a lot of times those guys that got those three sixty deals and all that thought they was up when they really were down. Yes. You but know I got I mean? a question yes. though. But um, just like how you talk about that guy with a fork that might blow up. Yeah. Uh, okay. When he blows up, suppo- he, is he supposed to go back and now learn the art of being a comedian after that? Mm-hmm. Or because Carlos Miller came on the show and he said, if that is what you blow up off and that's what your audience love, when you go on stage, that's what you need to do. Yeah. So if yeah. you're doing that, are you really learning the art of being a stand up comedian? No, I believe you're not learning the art until no. you start caring about the art more than the result. Right. So are you supposed to it like, are you supposed to do that? It's a thin line. Or are you supposed to stick with what you blew up off? I think the people, I think people are creating images and getting famous off things they didn't imagine getting famous off of. Mm-hmm. So now they're maintaining the image that people want them to have. Right. So wow. that's why it's not a lot of authentic people right now because mm-hmm. people are trying to go viral and then once you go viral for something you got to maintain being that. So if you go on viral for uh, some goofy shit, you got to maintain being that goofy ass nigga. Just like Mike F said on a on a um, interview the other mm-hmm. day that man out of he's done how many movies, how mm-hmm. many shows, whatever, right? Yeah. But every single time somebody see him, who do they call him? Daddy. Exactly. Yeah. You understand and he what hates I'm that saying? Shit. He, but he's yeah. like, that's the one character he cannot shake, and he's like, that is the best role he's ever played because of that. Because that's how you know what's the best thing you've ever done when that's what everybody call you, no matter how old they are. That's yeah. what they gonna call you. But see, but the difference between Mike Epps and Faison and all they air is that they was comedians before they got famous. Mm. That's real. So you can get famous and then just go and get to your routine. So you saying the same routine, but it was just twenty people showing up. Now it's twenty thousand people showing up, but you got that. You know you're you good because you already is performing. But it depends on how you are exposed to that that comedian. Because like for me, I saw Mike Epps in a movie before I knew that he was a stand up comic. Exactly, you but understand? he was a stand up comic before the movie. Right, but some people don't know Same that. Same thing with. But you know that when you go to the show. Oh, you damn sure you gonna, gonna do see it. the difference. Yeah. No, that nigga bad. That yeah, nigga bad. Yeah. That nigga. That's why a lot all of the OGs. I respect, respect all the OGs. How the OGs be talking about my generation, not respecting them and mm-hmm. thinking they full of shit. Don't don't respect. Them. I felt that same way. Mm-hmm. Wow, I because you knew how way. you supposed to do. You you did it the right way. When I say what all is, I knew, what is the right way though? Because that's not that's a cliche. Yeah, it's no. not the right it, way it's no really more. not the right. It's times change, bro. Yes. And you got to be able to get in the midst of the time. Yeah. And a nigga like like even. Man, I got to bring up Will Smith. Will Smith, when he jumped on Instagram, he killed it. Really, his transitions yeah. and the way he did it were yeah. better than everybody I ever seen. Yeah. Do Being did an you OG. see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he like this nigga quality got, and what everything. What the hell he just do to me? Yeah. Like this nigga, he came he in. He had a production team. It doesn't probably. matter for him to think like that. It, we can't just say he had a production team. That you know? nigga did that. That nigga didn't. That's that's a lot of, <laughs> yeah, but it's a lot of people that came on there that look weird that, that got money. Uh-huh. Think about it. Everybody didn't look like it the way he came on doing his stuff. Yeah. Some niggas just came on and just was doing whatever. And I ain't saying no names, but uh-huh. you Did can they tell have the a production team. They could have. They they got money. They just didn't do it the way he done it. Mm. Yeah. I see what I you're saying. I know some niggas that's on YouTube right now that, that got uh, fake views, just celebrities. Mm. That, that didn't know how to do it. Mm-hmm. You mm. got to understand, this stuff is it's a, it's, it's a chemistry. Now, he is definitely not, but I'm just saying... Some people just jumped in there and trying to make it look away mm-hmm. because they don't understand it. Or they bought a, 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 a what they call them people, they bought a little team so they could help them to build their right. page up and they uh, buying bots. 
Oh, right. they, they don't know yeah. that that's what they're doing, and, and they don't know because they getting played. Mm -hmm. So they running them numbers up. Yeah, think about yeah. that. And like music with fake streaming. <laughs> that's right. right. They're making oh, we doing great. We did this, and they like getting money. Yeah. Pretty soon they'll find out. But, but okay, it's too late. but you're young, and just like what y'all were talking about a while ago, saying that you know the OGs saying that young the young comedians whatever don't respect them. Do you feel that I know you you said you agree with them, but why do you think that the younger comedians don't respect the older comedians? Because it's a miscommunication right now. I think the OGs don't. Uh, I think the OGs starting to understand more that okay, it's going to be a million of these new motherfuckers off the internet. We mm -hmm. got to embrace them now. They some of them getting bigger than the OGs. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's the respect factor is getting there from the OGs. That's why it's a lot of. You know, going mm -hmm, back and forth mm -hmm. because uh, you respect the the OGs got to respect the success that, you know, the new generation is getting from the Internet. The part that the new generation got to respect from the OGs is the journey. I think I think the youth shouldn't compete with the OGs because they not running the same race. Like, I feel like it's a lot of comedians in my generation. They talking like they've been outside performing for a long time. And these niggas haven't. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've been performing for 11 years. I'm 29. I started at 18. Wow. The big. only person I was performing when I started was Matt Reif. Mm. I know Matt. I'm talking about my generation. Right, right, right. Wow. So Leonard Oops. It, you know, Nav Green. It's people that I know. It's true comics because we was damn near one of the only few comedians that was out at the time. You know, and then my generation, we started popping off social media. So I just started meeting my peers. I've been knowing my guests for nine years now. I've been knowing Mark Curry for seven years now. I've been knowing all the OGs, D-Ray, for seven, eight years now. Right. But they might think I just met these people because I um, got a name on social media now. Mm -hmm. That's not the case. Wow. That's, that's y'all story. I'm coming to mine. see you tonight. You gotta wear. <laughs> you just convinced me, nigga. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. No, no, no. You put me truth. on the list, nigga. I will be Pull there. Up. I you got you. Yeah. Oh, mama. We gonna go because I okay. need to see if this nigga really about what he talking I about. See if he real <laughs> fun. <laughs> if he real, real. I love it. But no, okay, but I had another question before you get into anything else. Okay, so you said when you saw Marlon. Wayne's on stage. You're like, mm -hmm. man, I can do this. Yep. A lot of times we see people and we're like, man, I can do what they do. Yep. Till the first time you had to go on stage. <laughs> I had to. I would damn near if I had if if I seen Marlon as soon as I got off stage the, for the first time I'd apologize to Marlon Wayne's. I'd have been like, oh no, I got a long way to go. I got a long way to go, OG. I respect everything you're doing. But at that time when I left that show and I was sitting in the crowd, man, I could do that shit. Mm hmm. I think that's God, mm -hmm. man. He just opened his that. eyes to He it. humbled you. That's yeah, what the thing is. Him no, it. Marlon Wayne humbled me. No, comedy not him. Humbled I'm talking me. comedy, yeah. Yeah, them open mics humbled me. So how how was the reception from the crowd that first time when you went? What happened? It was good. People seen something in me that I didn't see in myself. Because I, I felt like I did horrible because I wrote some jokes and everything. And when I hit that stage, I forgot every fucking thing <laughs> I wrote. I was nervous, nervous. everything. But... You know, I just started talking shit about the crowd, but I had to realize how to learn. Like, I was making the crowd go against me because mm. it's not a lot of people. You only got like 20 people in here. So if I'm roasting 10 people and I'm calling them tacky and ugly and all this shit, I'm roasting how I would roast on the street. Mm -hmm. So I'm making the crowd go against me. Got you me. know what I'm saying? But people, it was like, it was cool. It was shaky, but people was laughing, not laughing. But then people came, was like, that was your first time. You did so good, and you know you uh you got that Jamie Foxx in you. You got you remind me of Mike Gibbs, and that helped me to be like really, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't a good student, none of that. I didn't get compliments after motherfucking class. <laughs> right, pat on the you did a great job. So <laughs> people was giving me a pat on the back. So I'm like, I'm finna keep doing this shit. I'm finna get good. When was yeah. the first show that you felt like man that when, when you <laughs> felt like you killed it? Mm, I feel like um. I feel like I had a show in I had a show in Oakland one time and um it was it was like early my first year and I was telling a joke um and I was talking about how how niggas in Oakland be you feel me how we talk walk all that and um I was I was using my uh character voice Sonny Bo so I was like bro my mama bro you feel me nigga ooh, I'm imitating you know how we act it was a nigga in the front with dreads. This nigga's crying, laughing. He's crying. 
and it's not a lot of people in there, so I felt it, you know. It it made me like realize like, oh, I'm getting good at this shit. And that really would birth my character, Sonny Bo. Yeah, I wanted to talk about Sonny Bo. Like yeah. like when, when did when you birthed that character, what was the first thing that you felt like I'm gonna do this with that character? I knew I was gonna do what I did on stage with that character. Oh yeah? Yeah. I I'm like when I got the when I got my dread wig, um, I, I was like I got my dread wig and instant I was just like, you feel me? Uh, how Bay Area niggas holla at women. You know what I'm saying? And shit, I'm, what's happening, bitch? You feel me? Yeah. Turn around, see what you turn it down. I'm doing hella little shit, acting like a town nigga, all the shit. Then um, it went viral. Wow. That shit went like Bay Area viral. Yeah, that's hard, though. Yeah, Bay Area, but I wasn't like worldwide yeah, viral. Yeah, yeah, but it went sure. viral. It hit all yeah. enough for you to know. Yep. Yeah. Yep, and then I did that video, and then shit. Uh, I was doing comedy for like two years. I did that video. And that shit, Bay Area viral, and then shit, I started selling hella tickets. Wow, man, like, you you know, you smart, dude. Like, I knew that when I looked at your Thank page. You. you know, just looking at the, I be trying to educate people on there, mm -hmm. like YouTube and all that stuff. When I seen the, 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 the what it was, the Kickback Podcast, the Cali, it was the Cali Kickback yeah, Podcast. Cali when kickback. I seen that, I was like, this is what I be telling people. Like, you gotta be creative within your brand. Mm -hmm. you, you got you just put something with podcasts on there because you know you need that mm -hmm. all of them need that really to be to me like mm -hmm. the ones they need to have extra tiers you know you see all these different people getting people into their youtube and all that far as they 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 do it the old musicians they do the they do the youtubes but then at the end of the day they just do one one category you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah that's a whole that's a whole network that's a whole branding you could do it all kind of ways yeah you, and keep people on that page yeah you see yeah. what i'm saying you gotta want to do that you, but you still got that but that's a that's something that's gonna carry you on mm. think about it that that's why you that's where you start to build that's why i like country wayne and what he mm. does because yeah. of the way he built it up Exactly. You know, you can you, when you start making the kind of money that he tells me he makes on that stuff. Yeah, it's out of this world. You I, see what I, I'm I saying? Like, I feel like Country Wayne is like an alien. Nah, what I told you. Yeah, right. yeah, I think so too. Though <laughs> I, I think, think so too. I think a lot you of people are trying to right. do what Country Wayne you doing, right. and I think you just can't. I Did think you a lot of people said, just can't do that. An alien. Yeah, that's what I told him. Nigga, you an alien. No yeah. What is like motivation for a lot of people yeah. to get up off their butt and try? Yeah. yeah. Even if they don't accomplish it to the level the that level he, he does. has, yeah. but it made them get up and okay, if he can do that, he just doing it with a phone. I can do it because you know back in the day, people feel like, oh, I need this production team. I need this. I need that. And people look at it like it's so unreachable but for the main fact that you can see how he started and he just started with social media and he he I think that's off, normal like, nowadays I think I think the special thing about Country Wayne is that he he keeps growing he keep elevating mm -hmm. a lot of people at this point everybody can pull out their phone and do a motherfucking skit that ain't impressive but can you take it to the next can level can you keep going can you elevate the production can you get on stage can you are you going to continue to get on stage Country Wayne been performing He's being consistent. Yeah. So if he but he started consistent. performing after he was doing the skits for a while. He exactly. didn't just and that's the few that why the OGs be right. on <laughs> all the, all the but generation. But you gotta think right. about this though. We just said something earlier. You really said well, I said that Will Smith mm -hmm. killed and y'all like he had production. Yeah. But I could say the same thing about Country Wayne with exactly. just that cell phone and, and he killing it on exactly. the same type level. Exactly. So there's a big window for people to come up in. Yeah. You ain't got no excuse. Yeah. You can start here with just the phone yeah. or if you in the big league yeah. and you can come with production, there's so many different ways you can deal with the digital world right yeah. now. Yeah. Am I right? I feel like my generation get that though. They yeah. understand that. Mm -hmm. I think the part they don't they understand do. is what the OGs is trying to tell niggas. Y'all gotta right. perform. Y'all gotta perform more. Niggas performing for money, that don't count, nigga. Yeah. That don't count. Nigga, you gotta practice. You gotta care. You gotta get better. Niggas is just getting through the night. I'm not saying Country Wayne is, but I'm saying people in this time, I think my generation, understand social media. These niggas don't understand live performance. And there's a big difference. It's How a fucking big like difference. They ain't got <laughs> shit to do when you hit that stage in real life. I Nigga, know it ain't don't. no edits. It ain't no cuts. It ain't no, it ain't none of that shit. Alex Thomas, Alex Thomas talked about that same thing. <laughs> he, yeah. he broke it down on my show, like the way he felt about it, and I felt him on it. I had, it's so many different ways. I love what uh, I love what Carlos Miller told me about it. Yeah. I love what Bubba Dub told me yeah. about it. I love every one of y'all have given me some great examples. 
And I just want to be in the midst of making this conversation happen so people can continue to understand and learn yeah. on both sides of it. Yeah. That's what Boss Talk people 101 see, is. People see, my journey, <laughs> people see my journey and think I know Carlos Miller from social media. I know Carlos Miller from being a comic. He came to the Bay Area. We was on the show together. He didn't know me. I knew him. That's hard. Yeah, but we had a mutual connect, Bob Sumner. Wow. Bob Sumner is the person that discovered that, yeah. everybody on Def Comedy Jam. Yeah. That's what the game is missing. Wow. But that's what Carlos Miller is doing. 85 South got a hub of talent. Mm -hmm. I seen that. Yeah. How did you end up connecting with him and going? Because you, I seen you on, on the 85 South like platform doing your thing. Yeah. How did you end up doing that? Did you and him decide that's what you were going to do? Yeah, maintaining a relationship. Every time Carlos Miller came to Cali, I'm going to look out. Every time I came to Atlanta, he looked out for okay, me. Okay, okay. You know, I was on one of the the beginning episodes of the 85 yeah. South Show with the bricks on the back. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? They just wasn't tripping off what we was doing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I was behind anything Carlos and 85 South doing. That's all. So it, the bigger it got, shit, I'm just... I'm coming on the same platform. Y'all just noticing it because the platform got bigger. That's hard, man. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I had a question. So, oh, okay. When you, I want to stay on 85 okay, South for ahead. a second. Go I want to ask you about how did you, what did you think about when you seen their Netflix special? And, and, and I don't know if people thought about it, but you don't never hardly ever see three people on the stage like that. Mm -hmm. That is so abnormal Inspiring. when you think about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, the chemistry that they and have. And the chemistry that they have. What did you think about it? And how big was that for them? I feel like that was big for them in the culture, you know, just for black comedy, you know what I'm saying? Our generations, they really the leader of the new school. You know, they been showing niggas the way, you know, putting your shit on, uh, on YouTube, you know, traveling, hitting the road independently, all of that. You that's know, hard. that's why I said the independence, yeah, Atlanta on that now. But my root, Atlanta didn't show me anything about independence. I didn't mm -hmm. learn independence from mm -hmm. no other city or state. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn that from Atlanta, LA. I learned that from the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fab showed me how to sell merchandise. That's hard. Mm -hmm. Out the trunk. He, hey, man. Shout you, out Mr. Fab. Nigga, yeah. you can't be popular and be broke, P. You know what I'm talking about? He, nigga, you gotta learn how to sell something. You know what I'm saying? Get your, niggas, ism, all of that. Nigga, you, hey, you gotta put some clothes on, P. You can't be walking around me like right. that. Right. Nigga, get dressed. I, niggas wasn't doing, comedians wasn't coming wasn't like that. Wasn't doing that. that that's wow. the bass shit I was on. No, I'm being I, authentic. I, I believe it, too. I, I used to love to see when Too Short would come down here. We was like 18. We were young. He would come into RJ's by the <laughs> lake. These young niggas in Dallas don't know nothing about that. Lakeside. You know what I mean? Yeah. We was out there by the lake, by by Joe Poole, I believe. And, and we was out there, man, and we were partying, bro. And I'm going to be honest with you, boy. It was it was going down. He used to come through shoe pool uh, with, the, with, you know, with, with the people that was in the crowd. Mm -hmm. you know. And it may not even be a performance going on, just hanging out, doing a walkthrough. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's that's when it was. That's the '90s, bro. You wasn't even here. Oh, my mama's. son wasn't here. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I feel like if we if I was in the '80s and '90s, I'd have been bigger. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> no, no, you don't. No, I'm outdated. <laughs> I gotta. I'm learning how to work the phone, steal everything. <laughs> I love you know it because I feel like a nerd. I feel yeah. like a nerd. when I pull out my phone, it be like, hey, it feel like I'm talking. I'm the nigga that talk to people. Right. Nigga, I don't, nigga, I, I get more animated and I get to talking more when I'm around people. Mm -hmm. I'm a people person. Hold first, on, I got it. Oh, go ahead. Right. So, okay, because I feel like the art of um, stand-up comedy or has changed compared mm -hmm. to what it used to be. Because when you mentioned 85 South being on stage and yeah. the way in which they do their comedy yeah. compared to what we know traditional comedians are, it's two totally different kind of art. Yep. So would you say that the art of being a stand-up comedian is changing? I think it's trying to change, but I think people ain't good enough to do it. Everybody ain't Chico Bean. Everybody ain't DCM Fly. Everybody ain't Carlos Miller. Everybody don't got the ability to just be authentically themselves on stage and freestyle and talk to the crowd going back and forth. Some people are trying to do that crowd work shit and the shows is shitty because they're not good at bouncing off people. These niggas, some of these niggas are squares. They don't, they, they instincts, they reaction ain't that fast. Them niggas can do it. Right. And I think they changed the game. I think they changed the game for if you can do it, you know you can make it that way. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think it, I'm, I don't feel like the craft is changing though. You don't think mm -mm. so? Look at the top. Mm -hmm. Look at Deion Cole. Look at Deja Bell. We look. We talking about the top. Mm -hmm. I host the Hollywood Improv every Monday with D. Ray Davis. 
I but see the top, top. But the top Every is week. still. That's hard. But, yeah. it, That's hard. but the top is still the OGs. Yep. The top is not the the internet comedians coming up. It's, they haven't gotten to the top yet. Exactly. So I'm thinking like, I'm feeling like once they get up to the top, mm -hmm. That's when you're going to see the change. Because they're bringing a different That's style. Smart, they're bringing a different art. They're bringing a different but you got, everything. Yeah, but you got, you but still, it takes time to get to the top. Yeah, but you still got you got your, you, you, you got all the guys, the younger guys. You got your rap barbosas. You still got guys that's still growing in the old way In the well. old school yeah, exactly. way. Exactly. Matt Wright, rap barbosa. <laughs> that's right. Shane Gills. You. Hell. Myself. Damn, but that's what, let's you talk know what I'm saying? It. Yeah, you know so I, I think that's why we all kind of meeting in the middle. Got it. Because it ain't gonna change. It's, it's not gonna change. Nigga, you gonna have to come holler at me, nigga. You if you <laughs> if you gonna say you're a comedian, nigga, we gonna have to meet at the comedy club eventually. We're gonna have to meet on these big shows eventually. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying is I feel like nobody can get bigger than comedy. Mm -hmm. The art of the comedy. Art of you comedy. can't you can't get bigger than the art. Mm -hmm. Cause as soon as you think you bigger, somebody that's good at the art gonna be bigger than you. Like Kevin mm -hmm. Hart. Niggas think they big until Kevin Hart pull up. <laughs> niggas think they big until Mike Epps and D-Ray and all them niggas pull up. Cat Williams. <laughs> then they show you. <laughs> they show you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you think, yeah. boy, that, hey, that's so niggas true. Niggas talking shit about face I love until he, they, until the nigga pull up. That nigga gonna do that And then niggas funny. perform. He gonna go in, ain't All the OGs can perform. Mark Curry, <laughs> all of them niggas still good on stage right now. Mm. I know it. That's why I'm So playing. we got to embrace each other. When I see the OGs, hey, Unc, what you think about this? How you feel about that? I grew up watching you. I respect you. You feel me? I'm, it's, it's some niggas that think they more popping than the OGs. Nigga, it's your time. It's your time. But nigga, wow. respect the game. Nigga, that's like anything in life, nigga. Ooh. Have you ever... Had to. Um, I like this young nigga. He yeah. make a whole nigga feel good. This young nigga make a whole yeah. nigga feel yeah. like, you, like a nigga belong. You know what I mean? Yeah, because the Bay Area taught me that. Taught my parents that. taught me That's that. Hard, nigga, boy. you never bigger than the game. Nigga, I ain't the first player. Nigga, I ain't the first. <laughs> nigga, what? <laughs> my mama checked me. I was feeling myself early a little bit. Nigga, I thought I'm like. I, I, I thought I'm like. Shit. I'm, nigga, ain't nobody out the Bay Area go. Now nah, you know, did what I did. Hey, mama, my mama, my pops. Nah, nigga, Mark Curry was really that. He's still that though. But nigga, Mark Curry had a TV show. Damn, sure respect did. that for multiple years, nigga. You, you didn't just fully pay the way. I paid the way for my time. Mm -hmm. But the OG paid the way. <laughs> my question is, um, cause. When we interviewed Carlos Miller the other day, mm -hmm. we were talking about the beef and the fights and all that with the comedians, comedians yeah. right? Did you, and not only amongst comedians, have you ever been on stage and you wanted to just jump off on somebody? Have you ever had to fight somebody who wasn't anybody, anybody trying to come on stage? you yeah. or anybody ever come on stage and try to, you know, because of what you said, any of that stuff? Um, no, but, um, hate talking about that because you know some you can speak things into existence Ooh. okay you feel me Boy, so that's that's cold you know so it haven't happened to me and i don't want it to happen to me because i'm not going to react mm -hmm. i'm not i don't think like i my fans respect this first mm -hmm. so you know i don't want no nigga jumping on stage on me because nigga is going to be a problem it ain't going to be that so um yeah. You know, I you know you got to get that energy to your people too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, he, well, you know, as a comedian, when it's headed there, headed there, you know, niggas get to yelling and nigga, I, I'm gonna stop it. I'm a nigga. The whole show gonna be about me and you until you stop talking. One thing I like to what, what Carlos said too, not only because of the heckling back and forth with like the audience or or the comedian, mm -hmm. but also because comedians. Because y'all like to talk crap to each other. Sometimes y'all yeah. can get into it. Yeah. But he was like, comedians been getting into it way back in the days. Because sure. um, we see more rappers. When you see like TV or news or anything, you see rappers always be beefing or in the music. Mm -hmm. Comedians, you never heard of it. Till recently, you see a lot of it. But yeah. he's like, this been going on. It's just that they never used to pop out the film or they turn yeah. the cameras off yeah. when they get into yeah. it. So you, I, I people think we never go knew. back to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's more respectable. Yeah, it's more respectable. You got to respect your fans. Yeah. Right? Think yeah. About that for yeah. A yeah. I don't want my fans to be mad at me. Y'all knowing that you out here acting like you some kind of barbarian. Yeah. And some like niggas be acting like niggas. they're untouchable too, though. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I understand why some comedians probably get ran up on. 
Yeah. Cause these niggas think cause they on stage that a nigga can't whoop their ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't think like that. I don't think cause I'm on stage I get to say anything and you're not gonna get mad. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Are we good? Yeah. Did you do? Uh, did you think about uh, what about K Dub? You know K Dub. That's my nigga. That's shout my out K Dub, man. man. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. Shout out. a real one, real yeah, comedian. Man, we, he was here, man. We had a good time, man. Like a great time, actually. Uh, he just, like I said, he kind of like what you talking about. He definitely knows. He been in the game forever. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And he like helping, helping. I love the fact the way how he. He gives himself to those internet guys. Yeah, he'll go and listen to a Desi Banks. Yeah, mm-hmm. he'll go listen to whoever have him. Yeah. He'll go listen to a DC Young Fly. And exactly. you know, and I think that's the part about him that I love when he came on the show that he is reaching back and he is trying to bridge the gap because exactly. that communication link is not there like it should be. Yeah. He knows how to go in and do the right thing to try to make sure he bridge that gap. Now he will cuss your ass out too, <laughs> sure. but, but like how he but, should. But he really want to see you do good yeah you know and 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 i and i think that's dope you know what i mean so how did you and him meet how did me and k dub meet probably in atlanta okay you know i've been going to atlanta for several years um you know just wasn't recording shit posted i'm not a nigga that see niggas and take pictures and post it on my page so you know going to atlanta we probably met there okay and just to stand up and i know you've seen him at a few clubs yeah at the you know at the you know the uh cast cafe yeah 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 yeah, you know. What Did you think about? Get, no, I gotta no, get this on. in there while Did I got this going. Do you Go think? T- uh, uh, do you? Uh, what about Ti and his comedy? He coming out of rap. This mm-hmm. is the same. This mm-hmm. is that same conversation because that's that same. Yep. Him and Ti, dope friends. Him and mm-hmm. K Dub and Ti. Yep. Like, like, what do you think about Ti getting coming out of rap? He's probably the first that I can think of mm-hmm. comedian that was I mean, a rapper, rapper and t- that say I want to do comedy. Yeah, and really, he's he, from what I hear through K Dub, mm-hmm. he's really going through those different what you know places to make sure that he. Uh, respected and 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 he respect the crap. The crap. Yeah. I think that's important. It's the crap. The difference between Ti and uh, um, Ti and the other people that's just now starting. Ti understand the crap because he come from a he he got to the highest level of rap off the crap. So he understand time to put in to get a result. So Ti been putting out music. He understands studio sets. He understand right. He understand chemistry and all of that. So I think Ti is different because. He's getting better because he understand um, no matter how big I am, I had to come down. So wow. T.I. still, he, he up, do the though. small rooms. He does, he performed in the Bay, he performed in Atlanta at his spot, um, uh, Trap trap Cafe, trap cafe. Mm-hmm. Trap he City performed cafe. there. Mm-hmm. So he's not bigger than the craft. But he had a leg up because of his notoriety yes. of who he is. Yep. He didn't really have to start at the bottom, bottom yep. like how you know a comedian that nobody know had to start. But yep. I, you can see he, he has more opportunity to perform mm-hmm. because of his of his star power. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, he's still putting his ego aside and his fame aside because he's still performing, popping up at these places that you would never think Ti would go to, and he's performing. DC Young Fly is the same. People sleep on DC Young Fly footwork. DC Young Fly really goes in practice places. He I can't wait to see. To I had never seen him live. Mm-hmm. I got He the only one I hadn't seen out of them. The yeah. thing I love about him the most is his love for God. Yeah, that's what I love yeah. about these DC spiritual Young Fly the people. Most. Yeah, I love that they're about people. Him. Part. They're people. Mm-hmm. people. I see. <laughs> yeah, he definitely a dope guy, man. Like I, I ain't gonna lie to you, Ti, when he came up on that stage. Even though I've been in the room with him, you see on the wall hundreds of times, but. His, he's humble. Yeah. You can tell when he approached that stage yeah. that he's a humble person trying to figure out how to make sure that these people see me for what I'm doing here and that's the art of comedian. You know, being a comedian exactly. doing stand-up. Yeah, and when Tip started, he was shaky. Oh, I know. I was shaky. Oh, and word got back, nigga. Word got back. I was asking. I'm asking everybody because yeah. I'm, I'm a fan, so I'm like, this nigga finna mess up my rap, nigga, playing around on these stages. But he did what he was supposed to do because <laughs> when I said he did what he was supposed to do because when I, we had heard that, he had backed off from it for a second, and I think he reevaluated everything, and then mm-hmm. he came back out again. Exactly. And that's what I saw that he did. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. but I, I ain't gonna lie to you. I, when I went to the show, K-Dub came by here just like you, and yeah. I, he said, come on. I, I pulled up that night, 
and I didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And I when I got there, I was like, dang, I'm gonna see what this nigga gonna do. You know yeah. me. I got I like this show. I yeah. I like the way they set it up. But I'm a I'm you know, once K dub came on here yep. and once he you know, cause really when I met him, he loved the show before he even knew me. Mm -hmm. So once he came on here and I went, I already knew from talking to him, he he old school with it. So yep. I knew he was gonna ride. He knew how to convey it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I was I was And T.I. is around a lot of real comics. Exactly. He's on the road. I heard with about this nigga. He listens. T.I. brought me out in Atlanta. He said, man, this is my little homie, but he a big dog in comedy, man. I learn a lot from, you feel That's me? Who was built? I'm like, damn, I wish I had that on camera. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you, we all know T.I. the T. big homie. He's a big dog. He's a big dog, yeah. but... He like nigga with in, in comedy. He like nah, K Dub the big dog. Then that's respect. Nav bro. Green the big dog. J yeah. Ski. Oh, he around. He respect the game. Yeah, that's hard, man. And like yeah. I say, you don't find too many people that can. You know, sometimes our ego can be our worst amigo. Yeah. So mm, you don't find pee. people that basically you know able to push that to the side mm -hmm. and say, man, I'm gonna humble myself yeah. and start right here again because he didn't have to. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, he didn't have to, yeah. but I think he's trying to search for something deeper than what we even know. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's something deeper than what we even seeing yeah. going on with what he's yeah. doing. And he don't need comedy to stroke his ego. That's what I'm telling so you. So you can't break him down through comedy because uh -uh. he's not built up off comedy. No, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? My confidence ain't come from me being on stage. No. Nigga, hey. my confidence came from me being fuck with these hoes and being at these <laughs> house parties <laughs> and you know what I'm saying, being in the bay and all this shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's where my confidence that's come from. Did. Fuck this Instagram <laughs> shit, nigga. I felt this way before that shit was out. <laughs> Let's talk about E Forty, man. Like, like, like E Forty and them, they, they did start it, nigga. Uh, he, shout out to E Forty for. I yep. think P, I, I think uh, Master P and all them boys seen his move. You know, I'm going way back before your time now, mm -hmm. but that's what helped the independent movement. Yeah, you, even across, you know, even down in the in the into the south. You yeah. know what I mean? Don't get it wrong now. Don't get it twisted. Uh, Jay Prince was down here working. Yeah, Jay you know Prince, what I'm saying? So yeah. I ain't gonna help in the gate that. But yeah, straight up boss. He's Soon just straight. He, he don't came rap. to it. Yeah, but he came in it. I don't say he don't rap. He didn't rap on a few songs. But we did. Back, back in the nineties, he did he, jump on them tracks. Yeah, because every nigga that every nigga tried. <laughs> what? He was no Scarface. Yeah, you Scarface. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Scarface is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Also so, in the bay, we had to be. You know, they was. Oh, they were ready. They was Jay Press and Scarface at oh, one time. Oh man, man. Yeah. Hey, let me let me ask you this: Like, how did you? How's the music up there? How do you feel the temperature of the music? Who's new up there? You young nigga? Yep. You, give me, give it up, nigga. So when I pull up, mm -hmm. you gonna put me on that young nigga? Like, man, oh, yeah, get for that sure. young nigga. Come area, we 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 having a run right now. Who we, you got? We, we starting back up. We got Simba. You feel me, okay. Simba? He doing his thing. Um, we got La Russell. Okay, La Russell. He he doing his thing independently. Um. We got Larry June. Larry yeah. June going crazy. I know him, yeah. You familiar yeah. with Larry yeah. June? Independent, busting, yeah. player shit, going crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, we getting represented in the right way right now. So I'm 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 happy for uh the culture right now in the Bay. What about the cars? You know, I wish Dennis was here. I didn't bring my photographer today. I, I my videographer used to be here. Uh -huh. He from Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, he always okay. he gonna say the shifting and the it came from them, but I heard it come from out of Oakland, so I be giving him hell about it. <sighs> yeah, they, where did K it come from? K what KC people, shout out KC. KC showed the Bay Area a lot of love. They love y'all, yeah. Yeah, you know that's where Mac Dre was murdered at. Wow. Yeah, wow. Mac Dre was killed the KC. He had a show in Kansas City. Wow. And you know he, you know, fucking with one of them niggas bitches after the show. And, yeah, you know that's, a, that's, that's a whole another no situation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, they was they been tapped in on our culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so what I learned is me being in KC doing shows out there and, and being tapped in with some people from KC is that time didn't went by. So, you know, um that people don't even know where shit originated from. Correct. Correct. So like in Kansas City they they use the term boosie. Yeah. Like that's lame. Like we fuck with Lil Boosie. But it was a term before Lil Boosie was popping that we used to be like, nigga, you boosie. That mean you lame. I'm not gonna say that with you. You just messed up. Boosie been around forever, so y'all might have not knew he was popping. But in the South, he was popping. I don't know how, how long, long ago you talking, nigga. I'm, I'm an old nigga. I need to hear the date. You know what I'm saying? I think Boosie probably started in the '90s in the Bay Area. 
Well, you yeah, he got him by a little bit. He was he was he came around by two thousand three, two thousand uh, nineteen nineties. The Bay Area love Boosie. Yeah, yeah, like, it, yeah. When we say a nigga Boosie, that ain't got shit to do with Lil Boosie. He knows that too. He know that. He be out there. <laughs> he be out there. Yeah, he be out yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it, it, I think it was. I think I want to say it was before I met my wife, but I just remember when Pimp C and them started push, pushing Boosie and them around, and I started seeing. Yeah. I knew. I knew when they first came out. So yeah. the 90s would be, if it was the early 90s, for yeah. sure it was before Boosie. KC say a lot of, they say Boosie, they say hella all of that. And you got to think, if you was born in 94 or after 94, you probably think that's a Kansas City word. Because people be, they OGs been saying it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. OGs got it from my OGs. Wow. You got to think, ain't no Kansas City nigga came to the Bay Area and did a show and sold out and was fucking bitches. And it wasn't that. We didn't, we... That's not, we was going out there. Yeah. Popping it, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Saying, nigga, you boosty and hella. And they was fucking with it. So now you got the generation, my generation, they don't know nothing about Mac Dre and... Wow. You know, so they think they uncles made that up. Wow, I wow. mean, I tell, they call Seattle the town. And they, but you got to think, our biggest people, um, who's from Seattle that's huge? Man. Right? Think yeah, about it. Yeah. The biggest people that's been in Seattle is Gary Payton in the 80s. That's it. You don't think hella Oakland, nigga? Oakland is called the town. Wow. That's what we call town business. The town. Oh, that's, that's Oakland. But people in Seattle thinking, oh, we the town. But y'all adopting our culture. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's Gary there. Payton. That's Marshawn Lynch. They play for the Seahawks. Seattle Seahawks. Them Oakland niggas. That's right. It's hella Oakland niggas going to Seattle. You, you don't think they're going to pick up on the lingo? Yeah, the, the pivot thing. That's Martina. She from up there. Yeah. She from over there. Hustle yeah. mom. Hustle mom, Martina. Yeah, she from up there where y'all at. She, yeah. She be coming through. Yeah. She ex, is she ex prostitute? Yeah. That's why I like Dallas. Yeah. That's why I like Texas. I like Houston. I feel like y'all culture be getting took too. Sir, y'all oh, start man, Houston. Oh, man, that shit come Houston. from Houston. Houston, Houston started that shit and serve Houston. shit. Man, Houston, something different. But their culture is strong too. Like there's certain places um, where the culture is very strong. Strong, yeah. Very the strong. swangers. Now I was in Houston. I still see niggas with swangers. They with still the, do with that the, with the ribs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, power wow, Niggas man. still sip and serve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So niggas be pimping. Yeah. In Houston. Yeah. Oh, Dallas too. Don't they, Dallas, yeah, they do that everywhere. Fuck right around, but and then you can be rich just off Texas. Yeah. So you learn some. You know. Well, you know, we know. Young. Young. I'm young. telling this you, Texas hell, and California, boy. we the biggest states. That's right. So we could be, we could be getting money. We could be popping. People don't know us. That's right. But we the nigga Slim Thug, that nigga. I just was with him the other night. Shout out to Slim Thug. He coming on yeah. Boss Talk. We just talked about it. Yeah. Love that boy, man. I don't want to speak on the Dallas shit because, you know, I'm oh, the man. politics. Oh, man. Shit. <laughs> These niggas uh, yeah. killing each other. Oh, man. It's cool. different. Like, everybody. Everybody. It's different. Ain't yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Big Talk, man. Yeah. Stop playing, nigga. Yeah. We, got, we got some dealers here, man. You know what I'm saying? Some real, like, some, yeah. some dope niggas, shag, man. All yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's Dallas. So if a nigga start doing that shit in another state, a Dallas nigga is not gonna accept that y'all start. We got that. No, nah, nigga, y'all came to Dallas, see how we was wearing our yeah, hair. Yeah, y'all came to Houston, see how the we South was riding South our cars. In Houston, everybody got their thing. A Bay Area nigga not gonna have them rims and argue with a Houston nigga where the rims came from. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. The fuck. So respect our culture, nigga. Respect. We was the one that was doing donuts, nigga. Y'all was doing them. What? Killing. Side shows. Yeah, yeah. That's what they call it. Come on, man. We was the f what. Y'all killing with, it. Still doing it? What? To this day. Why? So do they do they get in trouble for it or no? We don't care about the police. <laughs> the police pull a day is part of our culture. Wow. Yeah. That's hard. It's, that shit like Mardi Gras for really? New Orleans. Yes. A side show. They yeah. pulling up. Everybody pulling up. Isn't on a certain day y'all do it? No, or just any Whoever starts swinging their car. And, and it just go crazy. And it just start up. And then another nigga starts swinging his car. It's culture. But not everybody wow. out there know how to do it. Nah, but it's a culture. Everybody, everybody might not have swangers on their shit or the rims, and um, every nigga might not have a shag mm -hmm. and shit. But that's y'all culture Let's in talk, Dallas. I want to talk about Mark Curry. I want to talk about the fact. How that did y'all meet? Yeah, that's that's something I want to know. And then I want to mm -hmm. talk about this joke stealing just a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 give me them two before you get up out of uh, here. Mark Curry. Yeah. <laughs> when did I meet Mark Curry? I first seen Mark Curry in Oakland, and um, at this event. I don't know where we was at. It was just like, it was some shit Mr. Fab had going on. 
and I seen Mark Curry, and I was I was doing my thing at the time. I was popping in the Bay, like 2015. Um, I was popping Bay Area famous, so I was feeling myself. I thought I was more famous than what I was. So when I seen Mark Curry, um, I was in my feelings because I knew a lot of people. At this time, I knew uh, a lot of people in the industry, <clears throat> but I haven't met Mark Curry. And well, you know, he from the town, he from Oakland. So I was like, Mark Curry disconnected with Oakland. And I was feeling some type of way. And so when I seen him, I didn't speak, but I wasn't like, I didn't show it on me, but I thought that Mark Curry should walk up and say something to me. I felt that way at that time on some ignorant shit. Then, um, I, you know, we didn't speak. Then I seen um, Mark Curry in Hollywood and I was a little bit more wise. I think it was like 2017. So I'm like, let me pay my respect to Mark Curry. He might just not know me. He just might not know me on some OG shit. I walked up on him. I'm like, Mark, you feel me? Comedian, you feel me? Bay Area, Oakland, all the shit, man. He like, what's your name? I'm like, Louis Bell. He like, for real, Oakland? It's good. He, he whip out his phone. He record me. He like, man, I'm out here with Louis Belt. Woo woo, right? Uh, uh, you know, it's my youngster, whatever. But then um, time go by. I was like, oh shit. I start fucking with Mark Curry. I followed him. He fo he said he he did say he was like, nigga, you got more followers than me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because he was like, who the fuck is you? And then he looked at my page like, nigga, you got more followers than me. Um, at the time, and um. We got connected, and then ever since then, we was able to chop game, and then he came on my podcast, The Kelly Kickback, and he admitted to me, because I told him the story, like, I seen you, he said, yeah, he said, he knew who I was back then, in 2015, but he was like, nigga, I just wanted to see your consistency, you was gonna have to work for that. That's respect. Like, nigga, for me to embrace you, you was gonna have to work for that, and it being 2024 right now, I truly understand that. That's hard. That's hard. You do got to work for that. You got to work I love for that. it. That's yeah. respect. Man. Yeah. So shout, shout out, out Mark to Mark Curry, Curry man. Sure. He, I gave, love he it. gave me a lot of game. Now he one of my mentors. Now. Have, have somebody stole your joke? Because Mark of Curry course. said somebody stole heels, and, and you know we don't have to go into detail. But I know who it is. <laughs> the funny part about it, I was at the reunion. Really? Uh. I was the only comedian in my generation that was at that Def Jam. Reunion. That's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they showed me. I, they showed a whole shot of me when I was in Damn. there. I was in there with all the OGs and uh, You've seen everything. Yep, I was sitting next to Mark Curry. Um, and uh, I didn't know he had a problem with uh, Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gotta hide it because I was I was telling him no because I'm at the reunion. I'm it's star studded. I don't know Steve Harvey. That's right. So Mark Curry on some this bitch ass nigga stole my joke. <laughs> Feel me? He like, I'm finna slap him, Lou. I'm like, don't do this. I don't want to meet him. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't got no problem with Steve Harvey, but he looking at it like, nigga, these his peers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, That's I'll, important. Yeah. So I'm like, shit, let me get out of their business. So um, I just, I was, but I seen it. He, Mark Curry, he, 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 he walked up on Steve like, hey, bro, you feel me? What about my joke you stealing? Steve like, bro, I ain't trying to hear all that right now. We ain't finna talk about that right here. But I seen it all. And he walked the... off? Not like on a walk off on some gangster shit, but it was just like, it wasn't the time and place. Right. Mark Curry's on some Oakland shit at the time. Mm. He, he blacked the fuck out. Mm -hmm. But it was just like, it was dope. To, that experience helped me a lot um, because I seen all the OGs be in the same room together. And it just like it showed me like that that beef and shit really ain't gonna help because outside looking in we love them all we don't know the politics so when I seen Mark and Steve get into it I'm like damn I don't like that because I'm happy to see everybody yeah you know but yeah that uh that Steve Harvey Mark uh, Mark Curry shit it was real that shit real so wow. can somebody and I understand though I, it's, Steve yeah, yeah he made a lot of money oh yeah he went in. Yeah. He, he can, gone, he gone, he to the stars. Up, but up to the sky? Can somebody else tell somebody else's joke to give homage to that this person? Or is just a, you can't do this at all. You're not allowed to tell nobody else's joke. Don't tell nobody else's joke. Mm. That's just etiquette. Have somebody stole your joke? Yes. Have you stolen anybody else's joke? No. No. Mm. Well, did you walk up on them when they stole your joke? The OGs taught me to do it. So you did address it. Yeah, I was I was going about like on some player shit. Like when niggas used to take my ism and my sauce, I used to be like, 
because I looked at comedians as squares when mm -hmm. I came in this shit. Because I came up around hella rappers, mm -hmm. so I'm around Filthy Rich, Mozzie, Mr. Fab. I'm around rappers, mm -hmm. so when I seen the comedians, they, I looked at them like squares. Them niggas wasn't rocking ice. Them niggas, like you, you had Chico Bean coming, he, right? They wasn't looking like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He always fly. He saucy. <laughs> you feel me? So me and Chico could relate on that, but he a DC right. nigga, so that's part of their culture. All DC niggas be fly. Oh, really? That's their culture. Oh, okay. Yeah, DC niggas be fly. So um, I'm so all that to say it's like I, I didn't have the interest to be for the comedian over their joke. Mm. I'm like jokes was like effortless to me in a sense, and comedians was how I was viewing them, I'm like, these niggas squares. So I'm not finna beef with a comedian over a joke. But me seeing <laughs> Mark Curry and D-Ray Davis and Guy Tory, Joe Tory, Red Grant, I'm seeing them have these conversations behind the scenes like, hey, bro, this is my joking. They pressing mm -hmm. each other. And I'm like, I act, I'm asking OGs, why? Mm -hmm. why? Why? What did they say? They, they on some, because that's, that's, that's your money. That's your image. That's your craft. I know it. I know what it takes to build up a joke. It sometimes it takes two, three years to perfect the joke. Right. So you gonna let? That's like a kid. That's like if you birthed a baby and that motherfucker three years old, you gonna let somebody just come in your house and take the kid and you ain't gonna mm -hmm. fight for it? Mm -mm. So once once they broke broke it down and told me, look at it from that perspective. Oh, okay. Even the OGs that's not confrontational. I ain't talking about the Corey Hawkins, the Faison's that we know they press niggas. I'm talking about the OGs. Shit, Guy Tory. Guy Tory is not a confrontational person. Guy Tory, I'm I'm at the improv. Hey, this nigga stealing my joke, blood. Not Guy Tory, but I'm talking to Guy Tory. Hey, this comedian stealing my joke. What the fuck should I do? Guy Tory, you gotta press him. You gotta tell him. Mm. Look him in his face. Hey, bro, that's my joke. You know I appreciate you if you stop telling that. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you've been telling this joke and I wasn't aware of it. But we got to come to an understanding who's going to continue to tell this joke. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So once I start looking at it from that perspective, yeah, I, niggas steal my jokes and I come holler at them behind the scenes. And you know, when you do have anybody like this kept saying the jokes anyway, they, even they, after you press them? Probably on the road when I'm not around. <laughs> Oh, when they okay. come to Arlington and when they come to <laughs> Atlanta and New York and when they on that tour, yeah, they saying it. But that's why I'm, that's why I'm out here telling my motherfucking set. I got it. Got <laughs> so it. you can see what the motherfucking game came I, from. I, I, got I, I know you. this is one you might try to wiggle your way out of, nigga, but I'm going to ask you anyway. You know what I'm talking about. What? Ain't no way in hell you coming on here and not tell me, will P. Diddy or be okay in the next two years, three years, will he go to prison? What do you think will happen with the P. Diddy case? That P. Diddy case? It's I, serious. It's serious. I don't know how serious it is. They ain't arrested him yet. I, do you think is, that it means, a, is it a smear campaign? Yeah, I was just is about it, to say. Is it, what you, are we doing here? Are they just doing this to this black man? It's not justified? What's you, going what, on, what man? It? That's all I'm asking. I think Diddy on some Hollywood shit. I think he getting caught up with some Hollywood shit. Yeah, I feel like I'm not, I ain't been around enough to speak on it. <laughs> feel me? It's people the OGs know. They know they went to them parties. They know. I done had a couple niggas come in here and tell me about them parties. I was I didn't have I didn't have presence to be at them parties. I'm glad, you know, yeah, from what I'm hearing. Yeah. It's comparable to but uh, them Hollywood it. parties ain't what they making it though. But let me just say this. He I always say this. You know I'm coming. I in. know he coming to Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner and them had some hell of a party. I don't think he could have topped Hugh Hefner and them parties. You know who Hugh Hefner is? Yeah, okay, yeah. Just check what? It. That's the nigga. You know, the know, the know how long they did that? They did that for so many years, bro. I'm telling you. But they're hey, white. It doesn't matter. It's it still, do matter. It do matter in literal sense. But I'm saying from looking at it from a... a I'm looking at both of them. If I had to weigh it out on honesty and pure, the same thing, it's the same thing. It is the same thing, but it's a different when, it's a difference when, like, I feel like, uh, what's the dude named the white boy? Hugh Hefner? Mm -hmm. I feel like he had a lot of, uh, back in his time, he'd be a bunch of Instagram hoes. Mm -hmm. They wasn't celebrities. They was just a bunch of women, like models. He made them something. It wasn't that Playboy he made him there. Yeah, that's Playboy. Yeah. That's all, he made him there. That's what I'm saying. That I think the difference between Diddy parties probably was that it's real celebrities with celebrities. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I wonder what. But a, not all of them. I wonder what an Elon Musk party know. would be like. I ain't gonna lie. I've been at a few Hollywood parties. I just seen some shit I thought I wasn't gonna see. Like with women. Like, damn, this bitch kissing this bitch. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, like that shit real. You think celebrities get on some weird shit when it's all celebrities? That's when I because did. Because they can't let their hair <laughs> down. I don't they fuck can't. around like that. I ain't doing no powder. They I ain't let doing their no hair down. down. Yeah, yeah, like because everybody on the same wavelength. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they like you. You can't big up nobody. You can't be Hollywood in Hollywood because everybody's. But not all celebrities are feeling that sort of way. So, so go, like like you say, you dip. You're yeah. not the only one. The certain ones that are like, they're not cool with that. They're yeah. going to leave too. Yeah, and they're going to look at you like you crazy if you leave. Did you right. see Columbus Short when he said what he said on Boss Talk? 50 posted it. Breakfast uh-uh. Club posted it. Uh-uh. When he said, he said Diddy called him at 2.30 in the morning mm-hmm. and he pretty much uh, asked him to come over and he said, who over there who with over you? There? And he said, just me. And it was, yeah, it was crazy. It went viral, viral. That's what I'm saying. I be hearing them stories. But he also told a story about he came in and they gave him something to drink. And he went they, to a party when they gave like it to him, people. He said it wasn't about 15 people in yeah. there. When they gave it to him, he felt, he hadn't been drinking. He said he felt this crazy feeling. He said that's when he ran to the bathroom. And, and he was an alcoholic at that up. time. Oh, he was and he said he was time. out of there, and he said his friend got him to the car and got him out of there like yeah. he was to go down. Mm. <laughs> I'm telling you, this. I believe all that shit though. <laughs> under though, for real, <laughs> I you know what I'm saying. I heard these stories on Boss Talk. I'm just believing that shit. Like, I ain't It's unfortunate because <laughs> you ain't. My pops always told me, believe nothing you hear and half of what you see. see yeah. Yeah. You feel me? So I ain't supposed to be believing believe this it, shit. But, yeah. but I'm like, this shit kind of sound realistic. <laughs> like, how could you make that up? Strange. How could you make that up? Yeah, like that clip where he was talking to Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Daddy, you ain't party with me. I ain't never seen a nigga get at a nigga like that. Yeah, that's different. So that's that shit they probably talk about. Mm-hmm. And if that nigga got at me like that, I wouldn't have been quiet. Like, I it, fuck with Fabulous. I'd have been some, like, nigga, stop it, playing it, with it, me. There's been some checking going on. And I ain't just going to be checking a nigga like, nigga, you a bitch. But I'm going to be like, hey, what bro. What you talking what about? What fuck is you talking about? This yeah. nigga, you acting real strange in here. <laughs> fuck are you talking about? But some people talk about, because of all of the money and power that he has, yeah. um, why certain people could be like, how can you be in certain rooms and not say certain things or not be cool and be cool with certain things? You understand mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, some people, especially when that person have your key to your success, so to say. Ain't no nigga got no key to nobody's success. But that's how some people feel. That's because them niggas ain't independent. Yeah, when Terry Crews got These gro- niggas are trying Terry to be Cruz employees. Got Terry Crews. Exactly, you're, you're, exactly. When you're trying to get hired, yeah, you're going to be corporate. Uh, you know, you're going to be keep, and, right. With shit that you don't fuck with. But if you ain't looking to be hired, you nigga, ain't trying to hear that. I ain't going to fuck, nigga. Fuck all that. You better not touching me, nigga. You crazy. Yeah, nigga. I'm trying to politic. I'm trying to partner. <laughs> That's right. And if you we if if I ain't working for hire, then, nigga, it's an understanding. Yeah. It's boundaries. Yeah. I agree. Nigga, if I if you ain't feeling something you don't like from me, nigga, you know you can this shit can end. That's real. That's so fuck. real. Yeah, people people forgetting it's humble begins, bro. At the end of the day, bro, I started with an open mic, bro. Top three comedians <laughs> of all time, dead or alive. But hold on, before you get into mm. that, but black ball do exist, though. It do, it do. So even although you talking, you know, people like, well, I can go this way. I've heard people, comedians, actors, everybody be like, yeah, I don't mess with that person, but all of a sudden I can't get a job. I can't get into certain comedy clubs. I can't get into certain whatever. Comedy don't, don't work like that. Black people don't run comedy. All the comedy clubs damn near white owned and it's a franchise. Improv is a franchise. They don't give a fuck about what P. Diddy talking about. <laughs> uh, top three. Comedians of all time. Top three comedians of all Dead time. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, this is your opinion. <clears throat> Dead or alive. Damn, y'all, y'all being real hard on me. Three? <laughs> three, three. Just three. Just three. All right, I'm gonna go um my opinion. That's tough. So this is your best comedians? For me. Mm-hmm. Mm, I, I hate naming niggas it at this change. point in my career. It These niggas change. be hating on me. <laughs> you know the secret to that? Dead I was just about to say the same thing. Just name all yeah, three like, dead ones. These niggas be switching <laughs> up on me. Man, I done talk highly of niggas. And niggas been hating on me. Uh, just name I'm a, I'm a, I fuck with... Uh, you trying to think of all the dead ones. <laughs> I'm going to do Red Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Red Fox was a player, man. He was the first nigga that was a it. player. You yeah, know what I mean? Was clean. He was the first player to ever be a comedian. Where was he from, originally? Uh, he was from Chicago, originally, but I think he moved to... 
I think he's from St. Louis St. or Louis. Chicago. Yeah, I always talk about St. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis or Chicago. So Red but you Fox. Know, I never saw him as a player in um, Sanford and No, 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 no. You had to see him had to as, see a, him comedian, as a comedian, as a normal person. Yeah. Player. Smoking on stage, got the glasses, had the bitches. I, I, I never seen his stand up before. Talking I always shit. Did. You can Raw look it up. Yeah, I need to. He was a real nigga. Okay. Red Fox. Um. Woo. Uh. Top three, dead or alive. Bernie Mac. Mm-hmm. Man, dope. Bernie Mac go got crazy. It. I got fuck it. with Bernie Mac. Serious dude. Yeah, real nigga. Give me Hella one. Funny. Give me one live one. One, one <laughs> yeah, alive. No, no. You want? You want me to give you one comedian one alive. that's alive? Lewis Belt. I knew oh, you were going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, man. I like yeah, top that. three, for sure. Man, thank you for coming yeah. on the show, man. I appreciate y'all, man. man. we love you, brother. Don't never come to Dallas and don't call me and say, for sure. I'm no, pulling it up. Y'all. I'm y'all pulling it crazy. up. I'm pulling it up. Y'all pulling up but tonight? No, yeah, yeah I'm going to come. All right, for I'm sure. I'm going to come. I'm going to put us on the list. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah, coming easy. to the early show. I don't do no late. Oh, for real? Yeah. what? Yeah, I'm going to Y'all responsible. Yeah, nigga, I don't even drink or nothing, so I'm really responsible. Like. Sure. I don't do nothing. I'm just coming to see you. Show yeah. my respect because you could come over here. I damn sure can come over there. For You're sure. Yeah, That's let's do it. Down, man. Yes, Lord. Check it, man. Hey, man. Make sure y'all check these next clip out. Man, it's going crazy. Lewis about to go in. Lewis about, ain't playing no games on this one. The next clip about to be hard as hell. Right there. Click it. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss's talk. And it's...